Welcome to the world of ZIP System Building Enclosures, where we believe in striving for optimal air, water, and thermal management, no matter the region or climate. Because when you have the right products to do the right job the right way, the first time, you're building to a higher code, the ZIP Code. I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building in Columbia, Missouri, and today we're gonna talk about why you can see ZIP System sheathing indoors. Let's do it now. Okay, we are at our infill project here in Columbia, Missouri, uh, and I am in the garage in the basement. So this is what we would call a tuck under garage with street direct street access. So the road is straight towards the camera here or straight behind. Uh, and we have a driveway that goes straight out. This tucks under, there's house above us, there's house next to us. So that gives you everything you need to know about why there's a zip system here. Video's over, see you later. Okay, really though, um, when we look at this from standing in here, it can be kind of confusing as to why that wall, but not this wall, or not that wall, or not the wall that's back in there, but why this ceiling, but if you walk in there and the room to my left, uh, those rooms don't have it. So it's air control, that's, that's the instance that we're using zip system for here. Uh, you know, we talk on the outside sometimes where zip sheathing or zip R is used for air and water. And then like we get above our air barrier and in the gables, it's just an air con or it's just a water control membrane. See how difficult it is? I even screwed up from time to time. In this instance, and we've talked about this before, I shot a video a couple years ago at my personal house. This is our air control layer between our house and our garage. So... If we look at this house from the street, you can see the tuck under garage door has got a temporary door in it. And then there's a door that, to the mud room. And in theory, we could just cut the wall out behind the camera that houses the garage door. And then this could all be carport. And if this were all carport, then all of this would make tons of sense. So if you've watched the build show build where we did the house that's up on piers, the zip sheathing went underneath the house. Or uh, at my personal house, the master bedroom cantilevers out over a back porch by about six feet. That cantilever space is zip because we need continuity of control layers. So what we have here is we have an exterior wall that is, uh, actually we did a face sealing method here because we're indoors and we have all the time in the world. We just ran a bead of sealant. In this case, it was Presco's air dam uh, between the concrete and the zip sheathing. Zip sheathing on the wall before we framed this, let's call it a partition wall between the house and the, the uh, garage. We put a little flange of zip system on the top of it and nailed it to the trusses. That flange then got connected after insulation to all of this. And then we have a flange on our concrete wall on this side. So the actual foundation wall is full height all the way basically to the garage door. With that being said, we had to put a two by six plate down and then put a zip system flange on top of it before we set our floor trusses. Uh, and that flange had to be sealed under the two by six because if you think about the two by sixes here, it could go around the backside behind the rim and into the assembly. So we're sealed below and above the two by six. We plated with that piece of uh, zip system flange, we'll call it a two foot run there. And it was on the three sides that we were framing. And then our floor trusses and then subfloor framing the rest of the way up, all of our mechanicals and everything. Insulation, because the top side of this is conditioned space and then zip system and tape. So. If we can make an argument in the past, say my house or the slabless slab house or the hybrid house or hilltop, if we can make an argument that we can use drywall as an air barrier there, and we did on the uppermost floor in all those cases, to great success below passive house levels of air leakage, below that 0.6 ACH number, if we can make that argument that we can just use it there, why not just rely on it here? You could. This is total builder preference. Uh, this is one of those things that we include in our scope of work that we barely even discuss with the clients because we know that we think that it's very important for us to do. But what we do is zip, 
and then it still gets the 5 8 drywall. And the 5 8 drywall still gets taped as if it were just going to be the solar air barrier. So why the double effort there? Because if we're talking about, say, the Hilltop House or my personal house, the Spring Valley Aero House, and you're on the second floor, and that drywall cracks a couple years in, five years in, whatever it is, and we develop a leak. That leak most likely is just a energy penalty. There could be a vapor issue at some point if we have enough air moving, if we have uh, high enough humidity or, or whatever it may be. But for the most part, that air leak on the second floor is probably gonna remain small enough that it's nothing but uh, an energy penalty, meaning air that we've paid to condition is exiting the house, which means new air has to leak in from someplace and we have to pay to condition that new air. If that's the case, it sucks. It's not what we wanted, but it happens, right? Like nobody's gonna build a perfect house. Here, if we have an air leakage between here and the living space above, that could be an energy penalty, or it could also be dangerous. So if you stop the video right now, walk out into your garage, look at everything that you store in that garage, chances are there are a large amount of items in that garage, including your car that kind of runs when you pull in and out, that you don't want that smell or that exhaust or those fumes or those chemicals inside the house. That's why you keep them in the garage in the first place. So belt and suspenders, double down, whatever you want to call it. We think that there is a valid argument for let's keep this space as an outdoor space and let's keep the space that's above us as an indoor space and we'll separate the two as if this is actually outside. And the only thing that's happening here that makes it not outside is the wall behind us here and the insulation. So this wall wouldn't have to be insulated. The back wall wouldn't have to be insulated. That wall wouldn't have to exist. This is a carport. All of this is an easy, logical argument. There is a lot that goes into this that you have to pay attention. You had to know that this was going to happen so we could put the flange up here or the flange on top of this wall before we framed this wall. Um, or even just where we tied in back there, this plate goes all the way to the concrete and then we sealed to the concrete. It's order of operations, as is any other opportunity for air sealing that we have. You have to know where the air barrier is. You have to know what it's supposed to connect to. But when you start by thinking about this as being an outdoor space, I think it makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier. The framers on this project, the youngest guy on the crew at the time, they were wrestling with what details went where. And I said, this is a carport. Pretend like we're not going to build that wall. And he was like, I got you. I understand. So thanks for watching today. I'm Jake Bruton with Aero Building. Don't forget to follow the Unbuild It podcast. Don't forget to follow uh, or sign up for the newsletter on the Build Show Network because there are too many videos. You're going to miss them if you don't get that newsletter. And have a good day.